In this video, we are going to look at an example, which is in a container, there is 300 gram of pure ice at minus 20 degrees Celsius. A mass of water at 35 degrees Celsius is added into the container and mixed with the ice. After some time, the temperature of the mixture is 15 degrees Celsius. Assuming no thermal energy is lost to the surroundings, find the mass of water added to the ice. We are given the specific heat capacity of ice, the specific latent heat of fusion of ice, and the specific heat capacity of water. To answer this question, we need to remember that thermal energy always flows spontaneously from an object with higher temperature to an object with lower temperature when placed in thermal contact. In our case here, the ice is in thermal contact with the water, and since the water is at a higher temperature, that is 35 degrees Celsius, and the ice is at a lower temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius, thermal energy will flow from the water to the ice. Eventually, an equilibrium temperature will be reached, and the equilibrium temperature has been given here as 15 degrees Celsius. In other words, the water has been cooled down to 15 degrees Celsius, and the ice has been heated up to 15 degrees Celsius. And we need to remember that at normal atmospheric pressure, ice cannot exist at 15 degrees Celsius, which means all the ice will be converted into water at this temperature. Here the mass of ice is 300 gram, which is equal to 0 0.300 kilogram. And we are working in kilogram here because the specific heat capacities and the latent heat of fusion are all given per kilogram. From now on, we will refer to the ice as object A, and we will refer to the water as object B. So we're going to write MA equals to 0 0.300 kilograms, and we are going to write MB for the mass of the water that has to be added. And this is what we need to find. We need to find the value of MB. To calculate the total thermal energy absorbed by the ice from the water, we are going to break this into three stages. We have stage one, where the ice is heated from zero degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius. Let the amount of thermal energy absorbed in this stage be Q1, and we can write Q1 equals to Me times C ice times delta T1, where Me is 0 0.3 kilogram. C ice is a specific heat capacity of ice, which is 2100 joule per kilogram per degree Celsius, and delta T1 is the E increase in the temperature of the ice in this stage, which is going to be 0 degrees Celsius minus minus 20 degrees Celsius, which gives us 20 degrees Celsius. So we get Q1 equals to 12,600 Joule. Then we have stage two. This is about melting the ice, basically converting 0 0.3 kilogram of ice at 0 degrees Celsius into water at 0 degrees Celsius. So let the amount of heat absorbed in this stage be Q2. Q2 equals to Ma times LF, where LF is the specific latent heat of fusion of ice. Here we have Ma equals to 0 0.300 kilogram and LF 300 and 40,000 joule per kilogram. We will get Q2 equals to 102,000 joule. Right now, after this stage is just over, 
we have water at 0 degrees Celsius. Then the final stage is heating this water, the water formed from the ice, heating it from 0 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius. Let the amount of heat absorbed in this stage be Q3, and we can write Q3 equals to Ma times seawater times delta T3, where Ma is equals to 0 0.300 kilogram, which is the mass of water produced from the ice, which has been converted. Then we have seawater as a specific heat capacity of water, 4200 joule per kilogram per degree Celsius. And we have delta T3, which is an increase in temperature of the water to go from 0 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius. So final temperature minus initial temperature, you have 15 degrees Celsius. And if we calculate Q3, we get 18,900 Joule. Therefore, the total energy absorbed by the ice, which I'm going to call QA, is equals to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, which is equal to 133,500 Joule. This energy was given to the ice from the added water. As a result, the water that has been added was cooled down from 35 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius. So let the heat loss from the water, that is added water, to be QB. QB equals to MB times seawater times delta TB, where we need to find MB. Seawater here is the specific heat capacity of water, 4,200 joule per kilogram per degree Celsius, and delta TB is simply the increase in the temperature of the water, which is 15 degrees Celsius minus 35 degrees Celsius, which gives us minus 20 degrees Celsius. The minus here means that the temperature has decreased. So we calculate it as final minus initial, then when we get it negative, we know that it is a decrease. Then we can calculate QB by substituting into the equation. And we will get QB in terms of MB as QB equals to minus 84,000 MB. And keep in mind, the negative is because the water loses thermal energy. Then the last step is simply to use the conservation of energy, which means that the system of water and ice, I mean the two bodies, A and B, they form a closed system and isolated. So the net thermal energy gained by the system is zero. So we can write QA plus QB equals to zero. So we get QA plus QB equals to zero. If we substitute QA and QB, so we get 133,500 plus minus 84,000 MB equals to zero. And if we solve for MB, we get MB equals to 1.589 kilograms, which is equal to 1.6 kilograms to two significant figures.